Hey guys, it's me Chris, and in this video I'm going to show you the three things, uh, the chart technicals that I use anytime I get into a position and out of a position, and also how to predict the, the future price movement of any stock. Um, and this also works with crypto. Crypto's relatively new, uh, it's been seeing a lot more trading volume, and it is more easy um, to predict nowadays with these chart or these technical analysis. So anyways, the three that I'm going to be showing you is the Ichimoku cloud, the MACD, which is moving average convergence divergence, and then also the RSI, which is the relative strength index. Um, I've had a lot of questions lately on how do I predict, uh, the stock prices or crypto prices. And it's really all about using these technicals, but it comes down to a, a, a company's financials for the longer term. When I start getting into day trading, that is where I really zone in on the daily chart, the four hourly, the hourly, three minute and one minute. The weekly, um, the longer out that you're looking at within the charts, you're gonna have a longer term view of what's to come. And then I zone in and I get into a daily, a hourly and a minute, chart and each of these periods are all the same so if you're looking at the rsi or if you're looking at the ichimoku cloud it's in terms of that time frame that you're on so make sure you remember that if you're looking at a minute chart the ichimoku cl cloud or the rsi uh, whatever may seem like it's overbought and oversold or bullish or bearish at that current moment remember you're at that current moment you're not looking if you're in a minute chart that doesn't mean that's what's to come in a day. You have to go to the daily chart. That's why the options to change in between time frames are there. So keep that in mind as well. Um, so if everything looks good on the daily, then I might move into an hourly or a minute chart to really zone in my prediction and figure out what's the best price point to get in. Because if the daily looks good, but the price for the moment is uh, high for the day, then I want to be low for the day, right? to get a little better uh, profit and a better margin. But if you're really not concerned with that and you're a longer term investor, then obviously these probably uh, aren't for you to even look at. Um, it's a lot about the financials. They are good to get in at a better uh, point, but they're not something to use if you're looking to invest long term for dividends or whatever. You can get a little bit better price uh, by using them, but like I said, these are for day traders and uh, maybe even traders for a weekly or two weeks in and out of a position. So anyways, let's jump over to my computer. I'm gonna show you those three. Once again, the Ichimoku Cloud, the Relative Strength Index, and the MACD. I'll see you over there. Hey guys, now that I'm over on my platform, I wanted to show you the three technical analysis uh, strategies that I use on all or most of my charts, whether I'm on things like Kraken or I'm on TD Ameritrade, Thinkorswim or whatever. I try to find these three, especially when I'm looking at charts. Now, the question is, how do you know which time frame to use? And I've talked about this and it's usually the one day, four hourly, one hourly maybe, three minute, one minute, maybe the 15 minute sometimes. Now that seems like a lot. The whole reason I use these is so that I narrow down the timing of entering a trade or not getting into a trade. And the one daily is going to show us the longer term. Also, if you take a look, for instance, the weekly uh, it, it's hard to gauge, <laughs> this looks like a big mess, but if we're in a stock, you're going to see a little bit more uh, fluid ups and downs and whatnot for weekly. I, I mean, it, it shows bullish. So what this means is, this is the Ichimoku cloud. Um, I'm going to try to explain this the best I can for you guys. But the Ichimoku cloud, it has a couple things here. It has a, a Chiku span. A, a Senku span B, Senku span A. Now the Senku spans uh, A and Bs are the actual lines with your cloud, and then the Kajin Sen and the Tekken Sen. Uh, Tekken Sen. Now I don't know Chinese, but hopefully I pronounce those the best that I can. But the Tekken Sen 
is the line um, within the cloud, the Cajun sin, the red line within the cloud, and then you have the Tekken span in A, right? So if I take this off, this is the shadow, or sorry, the span A and B is the lines, and then the uh, Cajun sins are the lines following with the candles. Now these are the ranges that the stock trades within, and as long as the line flips above, like a crossover, then we're in a green zone. As long as the cloud is showing green, it's taking the, the history before, and it's applying that to your chart, and it's saying, okay, this is more likely green. The key area, or the key thing to really focus on what I watch, is right here, is the Chiku span line. Now this is a slower moving average line for you. It's a slower paced, but as long as it's going up and it's above your candles and it's above your your uh, Senku, A's and B's, and your Cajun Sin, it's primarily a bullish move. Once this thing starts to cross over, you're gonna have that reversal that you really need to take, uh, take, a, take focus on and pay attention. Now I'm going to close this out and I'm going to go down to the four hourly and show you what we're looking at. So the daily and the weekly look good, but if you're wanting to get into a more precise position and a better time frame, such as today or maybe even possibly tomorrow, the four hourly, each one of these candles are going to represent a four hourly candle. Same thing if you're in a daily, each candle is now a day candle. One minute, one minute candle. So this to me, we see this crossover, it happened right here. Now this crossover was pointing down probably around this point. And if this cloud had appeared, we know that it's now going to go into bearish territory. But the key takeaway here is remember the relative strength index right here, your RSIs, it's, it's what a lot of traders talk about in MACDs. Both of these were in pivotal points when it showed green, which I'm in overbought territory. It's in green. It's hitting a high high. Uh, and then also right here, the MACD showed a crossover, right? And then we fell down, and the gap with these bands, this, this spread width, really got wider. And so that means it's really of a strong uh, dive that we're taking with the four hourly uh, charts. And so when... RSI dips, we also want to see a trend with the RSI. And it's, you know, uh, just think of a line, kind of like how you do candles. If the RSI is on a downtrend, we can see this, the power of the drop-off um, or the trend of the RSI got smaller or, or showed more of a bearish uh, movement. And that told me, okay, it's probably going to dip. The Chimuku cloud of red came into uh, focus here. The, the uh, Ch Chinku had dropped and got below, just like it did. And also the RSI, the MACD, all showed a bearish signal. <coughs> Excuse me, if we want to take a look at the daily, right here we want to zoom in and take a look at the RSI. The MACD is doing a crossover. This, this green to red is a transition from convergence to divergence. And I'm going to show you this when it talks about it on Investopedia, the relative strength index on Investopedia and the Ichimoku cloud on the Investopedia. These you can find and read a little bit more about all three of those. I use this almost in everything that I trade and I've realized it's given me almost a 90 to 92 percent prediction uh, or success ratio and that's pretty good. This is over the years that I've learned how to read these so I, I'm going to stick to these. It took me trying to read about Bollinger Bands, um, volume, moving averages, VWAP, and everything. And VWAP is really a good source when you're using one minute to three minute daily charts on day trading in and outs because it's going to show you the low points and the high points of where that stock price should be and, and correlation whether it's overpriced or underpriced for that given moment. Um, but I've tried all of those technical analysis and these three is what I have found works best for me and I'm hoping to share it with you guys. Um, I actually given my custom uh, coding for Thinkorswim over in one of my courses found on the website, investingwithchris.com. 
and how to use that and how to import it and, and all the good stuff. But right here, I always try to find whether or not the platform that I'm using uses these. With the RSI, I would like to duplicate this. And if any of you know how to duplicate and make more RSI show up down here, uh, I use a 14, a 7, and a 5. And that's just going to give me a better conviction on whether or not the signal is really uh, faking me out or if it's there. Because if I see a green uh, or, or an overbought here, thing, same thing with on the low side and oversold, and it shows on all three RSI and time frames th then, or periods, then I really know it's, it's, it's a good confirmation. Uh, one other thing that I do for RSI, and that is the default in RSI is 70 and 30. I actually make those a little bit more up, 75% uh, and 25%. So I want to widen that area so that the RSI has to really pump a little bit more to give me a better conviction. Because if you take it down and leave it at the default, you're going to see more and more of these top off. And as you can see, the stock kept climbing. Now, it was a little tiny dip here, but it's not enough and it, it could be a fake out. So, yes, this showed uh, really top offs and could this be a fake out? Here's the key takeaway I really want to focus in real quick. Even though the RSI showed green for the, the possible drop off that it's overbought, look at my MACD. The bars are still green. The MACD was still spreading over or out. It's not crossed over anything. So it was a good fake out there. So you probably wouldn't want to get into the position there. Now we want to see, well shoot, the RSI is pointing down. Your MACD is just crossed over. But look at this. Your Ichimoku cloud is still green. So, and we're trading above the two pivotal points with the Ichimoku that it's still above. So there's a lot to take in consideration when looking at charts. You know, this is the one daily. If you're trading off the one day, it may have not have been a good position to quite get in yet. But if you're are if you're still new and you're looking to to get in, then this would have been a good point to get in for the longer term shift up for Bitcoin. If you're looking to get out, then obviously the better point, you know, you can ride this out. And as you see, um, it the the Bitcoin really took off or t uh, dropped off right at this point. Now, what are we going to do in the near future at 47 here? That's the the question. I'm still seeing this thing become bearish, even though cl the cloud's green. I almost can predict based off the RSI. The, the daily MACD here and this bar is showing red and this width right here is, is showing me that traders will probably go ahead and continue to sell and we're reaching this this point right here. Did it bounce off of that? Yes. If this line starts to drop and this stock continues to drop closer to our cloud, here's some key uh, support lines and resistance lines that we have to take in consideration around by the time this stock drops down off of here, whether it's here or here, if there's some sideways action, we start getting into the cloud, or if there's some more uh, decline at a more rapid pace, we're looking at 37 and 42.6 thousand for the Bitcoin. And if it breaks below there, then obviously guys, you're gonna go ahead and fall into a more decline uh, with Bitcoin and probably gonna see those prices back where we started at 20 and 10,000 ranges. We want to take a look at the weeklies. Same thing. This stock looks good right here, but this bar is actually a transitional bar for me saying that, okay, now there might be some more downward movement. And then all of a sudden this could take off and it could just reverse and everything's back to green. It, that's the thing with stock trading daily is you just really take on longer risk. You want to resort to fundamentals, you want to resort to the financials and see whether or not the stock is good to get in and just hold it for the long term of whenever you want to make profit. But for day traders, I really I stress four hourly, you know, if you're wanting those quick dips in and outs, then even though the stock's moving, that little good pump for you could be a good profit, but taking consideration if that stock continues to drop and it doesn't really pump up enough for you, you could be caught and now you're in a loss. So then really zoom in to the five, the three and the one minute for your uh, minute position moves. If 
if coins are moving 20, 30 percent drops and in inclines uh, for the days. Right now, Bitcoin's kind of been in that 48 mark. It has been going up to uh, 50, 54, um, or not even 54, sorry, 48, 49, 50, 51 area, and then it's dropping off. As you can see, we're, we're in 46, dropped off to 46.4. So there's really no profit to be captured here right at the current moment. That's why I say, in order to really get a feel for reading charts, you need to take a look at your longer term perspective, see where the stock's moving towards, whether it's up or down, and then start zooming in on the five minute, the three minute, and one minute, and determine where you want to get in at, and if you want to day trade at that that particular moment. Uh, to me, Bitcoin, like I said, it's it's a big red candle. Want to take a look at the daily? To me, this could drop off to 45. So would I even get into day trading right now with Bitcoin? Probably not. Um, so let's take a look real quick at the Ichimoku Cloud, the Relative Strength Index, and the Moving uh, Average Convergence Divergence, and let's understand where they come from and how they work. So the Ichimoku Cloud definition and uses, you can find this on Investopedia. Uh, it's a collection of technical indicators that show support and resistance levels, as well as the momentum and trend direction. It does this by taking multiple averages and plotting them on the chart. It also uses these figures to compute a cloud which attempts to forecast where the price may find support or resistance in the future. So uh, the cloud was developed by Gu, uh, Guachi Osoto, a Japanese journalist. Huh, who would have thunk it that he's a journalist and not a mathematician. But he was wanting to understand a well-defined trading signals and he basically came up with this formula. So here's what an Ichimoku cloud looks like and then how to read um, that and you can see how it compares to when a stock falls off and comes back. Uh, when you're seeing red and a green cloud, you're typically going to see this pump and then it falls short and then it comes up again. So just remember, stocks rise and fall. It's just a matter of predicting when that drop off is and when that rise and over and over again. It's hard to get perfection of its highest high, but if you can start making money on day trading using these three methods, um, it's what I use. I think you're going to be really happy. So the relative strength index, it's basically a momentum indicator used in technical analysis that measures the magnitude of recent price changes to elevate bought or overbought and oversold conditions in the price of a stock or other asset. The RSI is displayed in an oscillator, which is down here. These are oscillators. Um, a line graph that moves between two extremes and can have a reading from 0 to 100. The indicator was originally developed by J. Wells Wilder Jr. and introduced in a seminal 1978 book, New Concepts and Technical Trading Systems. Traditional interpretation and usage of the RSI values are the values of 70 or above indicate that a security is becoming overbought or overvalued and may be primed for a trend reversal or the uh, corrective pullback in price. The R an RSI reading of 30 or below indicates an oversold or undervalued condition. Now remember, I told you to widen that a little bit to get a better conviction of when it's oversold and undersold or a pullback. Um, you want to change those out to 75 and 35. And that's just my personal uh, uh, choice, what I do, and I found it works better for me. The Relative Strength Index is a popular momentum oscillator developed in 1978. Uh, and it RSI is popular amongst traders for signals about uh, bullish and bearish price momentum. So you can read through all this. It, 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 it even gives you the formula if you're a mathematician or you really want to figure out how it's calculated. Here's the formula for it with technology today. Why do you need to do that? Most of these platforms do it for you as you can see. You just need to know how to read the oscillators and the technical analysis of them. So there's that, the moving average convergence of divergence. It's another popular technical analysis. And if you put the RSI and MACD together, you're really going to find a better predictable uh, capability for your day trading. And I'm not going to say go out and start day trading right away and use these. I want you to practice with them, whether it's simulated trading for Thinkorswim, which has a good option, or some system out there that really has a paper trading side, and learn the patterns of these stocks you know, it, it really takes an investigative approach when trading, okay? If 
Stocks start to drop off on Thursdays and Fridays. Find out why, whether it's profit taking, you know, find the pattern of every other week. I see this going on. This is typically what happens on a Monday. And if it happens on Monday, then this is probably what's going to happen on a Thursday and Friday. Things like that you really need to start paying attention to um, amongst news because news will also drive that stock up. If the thing is looking overbought uh, and then all of a sudden some good news comes out, typically it's going to continue in that upper bot movement. And that's why if we take a look at this, even though right here Bitcoin was green, it looked like, oh, okay, it's going to reverse. It was a minor reverse, and then it continued to, con uh, continued to grow. And then right here we dropped off um, for a, uh, let's see, 40 to 30% drop off. I mean, literally a 10 to 20% retracement, and then it took off again. I would probably have used the Fibonacci here, and that's just a retracement level based upon the Fibonacci levels um, using how much of a stock could pull back before it takes off again. And I've explained Fibonacci uh, to some of my students. Fibonacci is also a great one. Don't get caught up in always using it, but if you know how to use Fibonacci and understand the retracement levels of how far a stock may pull back before it takes off again, that's another great source as well. So anyways, guys, uh, I explained the oh, one other thing, and that's just understanding EMAs, which move off of MACD. Uh, your MAC moving average converges divergence as a trend following momentum indicator that shows the relationship between two moving averages of a securities price. The MACD is calculated by subtracting the 26 period exponential moving average uh, EMA from the 12 period EMA. So you're just basically getting a better understanding of the, uh, uh, the, the exponential moving average and where that crossover is. And if you want to read more about exponential moving average, here it is on Investopedia as well. Always, guys, remember, do your due diligence on all these stocks, these alerts, the tickers, coins, whatever, the, whatever they may be comprised of in your trading habits. Always practice first, master the pr patterns, and get to know your technical analysis and really your fundamental analysis. If there's anything you would like to know, drop them down in the comments. And as always, like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.